Support for Sports Page is provided by the University Store. The University Store is the official headquarters for Mules and Jenny's Emblem Clothing, Gifts, and UCM Memorabilia. Books, office supplies, art supplies, and more are available at the University Store, located on the lower floor of the Elliott Union on the UCM campus in Warrensburg. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco 98.5 The Bar and WarrensburgRadio.com. 1450 Coco 98.5 The Bar and WarrensburgRadio.com, the radio home of UCM Athletics. Highlights of Mules football. A look ahead to the Mules' first ever trip to Edmond, Oklahoma to take on UCO, as well as a spotlight on Ron Ree Lloyd, the Mules' outstanding senior wide receiver, and Jenny's Volleyball's 21-0. They've got two senior leaders leading them to that outstanding start. We'll get to know Taylor Goodness and Julia Bates tonight here on Sports Page. All of that and more coming up next right here on KMOS TV. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for watching the University of Central Missouri Sports Page. I'm your host, Sean Jones. It's a busy time for UCM Mules and Jenny Sports, so let's get right to it. Well, Mules football has faced a difficult schedule so far in 2013. They faced three teams ranked in the top 10 in the nation. Their opponent's overall record heading into last week, a sterling 26 and 5. The challenge was big last Saturday. It was blackout day at UCM as the Mules hosted the 10th ranked Pittsburgh State Gorillas. Let's take a look at the highlights. It was a gorgeous day for football. The Mules, a team that so far this year had not turned the football over, just two offensive turnovers on the season, entering this football game. And there Hayden Hawk throws one over the middle. And one of the best players in MIAA history on defense, Nate Dryling, with the interception. So an inauspicious beginning for the Mules. It sets up the short field for Pitt State. And their outstanding 6'3", 220-pound quarterback, Anthony Abanoa running the option into the end zone. 15 yards. We played about two and a half minutes, as you see there, and Pitt had the 7 to nothing lead. The game kind of went back and forth as both teams settled in a little bit in the early going. The Mules uh, taken off the field by the Pitt defense, and then there you see the Mules doing the same. Ramon Hunter batting a ball into the air, and Adrian Paraconi with the interception. That stops Pittsburgh State. That sends the Mules on the drive. The Mules, a team that Known for their passing propensity in 2013. Pretty solid drive, but they come up empty with a turnover. There you see Josh Steinert with the sack. And the Mules once again get the football back. How about this pass down the sideline from Hayden Hawk to the speedy LeVance Taylor, and the Mules are on the move. At this point, the Mules are down 7-0. It seems worse, but then Hayden hits Tristan McClellan for the touchdown. That's a 71-yard drive for the Mules, and we are tied at 7. There's Ron Ree Lloyd. We'll spotlight him later tonight. He's been one of the top receivers in the country so far this season. Hayden Hawk shows his ability to move his feet, get the first down there, uh, but the Mules not able to cash in. Again, turning the football over. A couple of rare interceptions in the first half. The Mules, though, get another stop, get the football back. How about this pass? Timing pattern right side. It's Hayden Hawk to Ron Ree Lloyd. Couple of stiff arms for good measure. 73 yards to the end zone. And the Mules on a 14 to nothing run after the extra point. And they battled back in a big way. Kind of stunning Pitt leading 14 uh, to seven at that point. Pittsburgh State though, ranked 10th in the country, undefeated. The fastest player in D2 right there, John Brown, moving the Gorillas down the field. John Brown into your living room. The Gorillas have tied it at 14, one minute to go in the half. Well, the Mules not able to field a short kick. Pitt recovers at the 33, they march down. And there you see Anthony Avanoa to John Brown just kind of hanging out down at the five yard line and all of a sudden Pitt State is knocking on the door and they will answer right here. Backdoor pass to Connor Combs are tight in and all of a sudden Pitt State in 54 seconds scores 14 points. They take the momentum and a seven point lead into the locker room. There's third quarter action. Ian Tolson with the catch his first of the year play action for Hayden throwing it over the middle. Good catch there by Ron Ree Lloyd, 176 receiving yards on the day, his fifth straight 100-yard receiving contest in a row. But Pitt State, a tough team. They've got the big tight ends. There's Connor Combs, caught the touchdown in the first half. Pitt trying to make it a three-score lead, but a fumble 
And the ball is loose and Tevin Teamer, the red shirt freshman, will recover. And the Mules, instead of being down three scores, are down two scores starting at their own two. And they go on the best drive of the season for Mules football. Hayden Hawk orchestrates an 11 play, 98 yard drive that lasts two minutes and 57 seconds. Hayden ha asking guys to break off the routes, finding Tristan McClellan for his second touchdown of the game. Tremendous drive, 98 yards, and the Mules have the momentum. They are within a touchdown, 28-21, after the extra point by Mr. Everything in the kicking game, Zach Gebhardt. But Pittsburgh State, an outstanding team. They answer as Gavin Luttman, a 6'5 receiver, catches this pass over the middle, and Pitt State gets the field goal of 28 yards from Connor Frizzell. The defense for the Mules holds Pitt State to three points, but it's still a two possession lead for Pitt State 31 to 21. And at that point, unfortunately for the Mules, Pitt State with their outstanding running game, their balance on offense, able to grind out the clock. You see Jeff Siebold, second in the nation in scoring touchdowns, heading into this game almost with one there. Pitt State gets down to the one, just a few seconds left. Tim Beck, the outstanding coach for Pitt, led him to a national title two years ago. Very classy move, takes a knee, and the Mules fall short in this one. Another great effort, but coming up just short as they fall by the final score of 31 to 21 in this game. Despite the loss, still some outstanding performances for the Mules. Ricky Spratley from St. Louis to Smet had 13 tackles and a forced fumble. Ron Reed Lloyd again his fifth straight 100 yard receiving game, 176 yards. That's eighth best in single game history for UCM football. Tristan McClellan, his first year in the program, he has two touchdown catches. And Adrian Perricone had an interception, a sack, and five tackles for the Mules, who are now two and four overall, one and four in the MIAA. Well, it was certainly a front loaded schedule for Mules football. Those opponents, again, starting out with three nationally ranked teams, uh, three teams that traditionally compete for MIAA and even national titles. The schedule does flip a bit in terms of the opponent records now as the Mules get set for their final four games. And ironically, if the Mules can find a way to win those four football games, they will have a better season than a year ago in a season in which the Mules rebuilding with young talent, just one senior playing on offense, a couple of seniors playing over on the defensive side. Last year, down this four-game stretch, the Mules lost a couple of games. Quite honestly, they probably felt like they shouldn't have. Last year, a very strange game against this week's opponent, the Central Oklahoma Broncos. It wasn't homecoming last year. It was home staying. It took two days, a lightning delay on Saturday. The game was started. We went to day two with the Mules down 10 to 6. They restarted play on Sunday. Mules went on a terrific run and won 47 to 17. We go down to Edmond, Oklahoma Saturday for a one o'clock kick at gorgeous Wantland Stadium in Edmond, a northern suburb of Oklahoma City. The Broncos are sitting there at 0 and 6. They have played the toughest schedule in college football, period. Five straight nationally ranked opponents for the Broncos of UCO. Their opponents combined record an amazing 35 and 1. So yes, they are 0 and 6. No, they have not been as close as the Mules have been so far this season. But they do have two of the best players in the country. Joshua Birmingham, their tailback, a Harlan Hill candidate. That is the Heisman Trophy of NCAA Division II. They also have wide receiver Marquez Clark. He signed with Kansas State. He ended up at UCO. He is an amazing talent, 251 all-purpose yards per game. That leads Division II. So the Mules, a team that feel like they should be able to go into Bronco land and get a win this Saturday, but a lot of talent on that UCO team. The one thing they have done that has really hurt them, they have turned the football over. They are minus 10 in turnover takeaway. So for the Mules to have success this Saturday down in Edmond, Oklahoma, they are going to have to do something that sounds so simple, but it's difficult in the game of football, and that is they cannot turn the ball over. Again, heading into last week, the Mules just two offensive turnovers, but they had four big ones against Pitt State. That is not going to work on the road at UCO. The other thing the Mules need to do, take it away. The Broncos have tried to give it away on several occasions this season. And, of course, the Mules last week had a couple of big takeaways. They're going to need that to continue this week. And another thing I think very important for the Mules, they've had a few bugaboos and special teams. They're going to have to clean that up this week on the road against arguably the best 0-6 team in the country in Central Oklahoma, facing five nationally ranked opponents, but 0-6 nonetheless. So an opportunity for the Mules at 2-4, 1-4 in the league, close to those top teams, but not quite there. An opportunity to right the ship, get a victory, start a win streak, head home to homecoming in two weeks against Northeastern State with some positive 
momentum. That's a 1 o'clock kick Saturday in Edmond, Oklahoma. The Mules and the Broncos, first ever trip for Mules football to Edmond in 118 seasons of UCM football. 1 o'clock for the kick, 1140 a.m. airtime on 1450 a.m., 98.5 The Bar FM, and on your smartphone or on the internet at warrensburgradio.com. Well, as I mentioned, just one senior on the Mules offense. That is Ron Ree Lloyd. He is having a special season. Five straight 100-yard receiving games for the lone senior on that offense from out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're going to get to know Ron Ree coming up next right here on Sports Page. And welcome back to Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. In this segment, we shine the UCM student athlete spotlight on Mule senior wide receiver Ron Ree Lloyd. Six years old. Um, there was this football coach from my little league, and like he used to be in my neighborhood. He seen me around. I really wasn't doing nothing, and I guess someday, one day, he told my mom that like if I don't get on the football field the next day, then him and my mom was gonna have a problem. And eventually, I got on the football field, and it turned out for me. Mentors. Uh, so one mentor that I had, he's not an athlete. He's more, he's a family figure. He, he's always on my back about succeeding and then doing better for my life and doing, doing better for my family. Uh, football wise, uh, I'd probably say I look up to like Larry Fitzgerald, uh, Calvin Johnson. I like Larry Fitzgerald because like the way he carries himself and he's the Hasman, he's the Hasman Trophy winner. So. He got a high standard for himself. I just try to be a little like him. It was a long road for me. I went to a junior college, uh, could have went Division One, and grades wasn't that good. And the quarterback, Coulter Smith, he was playing. He was starting quarterback last year. We kind of got in touch, and he got me connected with Coach Lambo. I talked to Coach Lambo, and Lambo was one of the reasons why I chose to come here. He's a cool guy, cool coach, and. If anything, I just wanted to be around a coach that respected me and had high standards for himself. Coach Lambo, he's, he's he's my favorite coach. He, if I need, ever need anything, I'll go to him. And if he can't help me, he'll point me in the right direction. Um, all of our coaches is good. All of our coaches, I like all my coaches. Uh, the difference between this year's team and last year's team. Um, we're strong. We're strong. Will a lot of a lot of us hang around each other off of the field, and like if you're together off of the field, you you start to build a stronger unity of each other. And when we get on the field, more trust comes with staying off of the field. Um, last year, we I don't I'm not sure how many seniors we had, but we did have a few a lot of, a lot of seniors, but we also got a young a lot of young players on our team and. With the young players having years in a uh, program, like everyone's kind of like on the same level. This semester, I spend a lot of time in the library. I got to stay focused and really worry about my grades. But when I do got some spare time, I like to play the NBA 2K. And a lot of players on our team play that game, that or either Madden. So usually a few players will get together and have like a tournament and try to see who's the best. It's more of a competition thing. Personal goals for this year, uh, just strive to be the best, the best I could be. Um, I would like to be a thousand yard receiver. I wasn't last year, I was close. And right now I'm on the track to be a thousand yard receiver. Um, another personal goal would probably just be doing my best in school this semester, getting the highest grades I probably ever got uh, GPA wise, that's it. Right now, we're, we're still trying to find our identity. Uh, we are a good team. 
no doubt about that. Um, we just got to continue to work and go out every game playing and doing what we are capable of. I, it, it really just started this year. The, the game against uh, our second game, I kind of taped. I started taping up all white, using all white, white bands, white gloves, and I just try to do that every game just to just to stay on the safe side. We're, I, I, I would probably say we're more of a go-getter team this year. Like we, our coaches expect a lot from us, and we expect a lot from ourselves. And like our coaches know we can be the best. We just got to go out there and prove to them, our fans, uh, the whole division two, and more importantly, we just need to prove to ourselves that we can do this. Something we need to do to, to like really hit our peak into the year is just be confident and go into every game. Our offense need to score 45 to 50 points. We can do it. We're capable of it. Uh, on our defense, our defense is good. As long as they keep doing what they're doing, we should be all right. Ron Ree has put together five straight games with more than 100 receiving yards. His 120 receiving yards per game ranks 10th in all of D2 football. The 6'3 senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is also moving up the UCM record book. He's ninth in school history with 14 touchdown receptions and his 1,691 career receiving yards are eighth best in school history. Hopefully Ron Ree will add to those impressive totals this Saturday at Central Oklahoma. Again, that is a one o'clock kick this Saturday from UCO. Airtime on 98.5 FM, 1450 AM, and on your smartphone and the internet at warrensburgradio.com is 1140 AM. Coming up next here on Sports Page, we'll take a look back at how Central Missouri's fall sports teams were formed this past week. And we're going to show you the senior leaders of the 21 and 0 and fourth ranked volleyball Jennies, Julia Bates and Taylor Goodness. That's on the other side of this break when Sports Page continues right after this. Once again, thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV. Coming up in just a moment, we're going to get to know the two senior leaders of the 21 and 0 Jennies volleyball team, Julia Bates and Taylor Goodness. But first, let's take a look back at how all the Mules and Jenny sports teams performed this past week. And we start with the Jenny's volleyball team. They stayed undefeated. The Jenny's went down to Joplin to compete in the Missouri Southern Invitational Crossover. The Jenny's best at Arkansas Tech, three to nothing. Carly Soika, the sophomore from Blue Spring South, an outstanding match with 12 kills and four blocks. The Jenny's really put it all together on Friday against Southwestern Oklahoma State. Taylor Goodness, 15 kills, a 522 hitting percentage as the Jennies cruise to a three to nothing win over Southwestern Oklahoma. It was a tough one on Saturday. Harding came out uh, the top team in the GAC and they wanted to give the Jennies a game. The Jennies undefeated were in the big target on their back, but the Jennies were able to settle in and prevail against Soika, the double-double, 17 kills and 10 digs as the Jennies win it three to two over Harding. It was back to conference play on Tuesday night. Northwest Missouri, outstanding team, a scrappy team. Again, the Jennies, uh, everybody's getting their best shot right now. The Jennies go up there and get the three to one win. It was a hard earned victory. Becca Blaze from out of Chesterfield, a freshman with 15 kills. Annie Riley, the sophomore from Overland Park, 26 digs. Four service aces for the Jennies, who remain undefeated at 21 and 0, 7 and 0 in the MIAA, ranked fourth in the nation this week. But when you take a look at the Central Region, where the Jennies play, number one, number two, number four, eight, 12, 15, and so on, all from the Central Region. So the Jennies in the toughest region in the country, but perfect so far at 21. And oh, well, when you talk about streaks, all the great ones unfortunately come to an end at some point. Jenny Soccer had a big streak, 48 games in the MIAA in the regular season without a loss. It was snapped this week, falling two to one to Missouri Southern, but what a streak if you really think about it, going back to 2008 for Lewis Theobald's program without losing in the league. That is just remarkable. Credit to Missouri Southern for snapping that skid. Also credit the Jennies, who bounced back in a big way on Tuesday night, 
stepping out of MIAA play to host a regional rival in Rockhurst. Julie Ireland from Lake St. Louis scored both goals for the Jennies, including the golden goal in overtime as the Jennies beat Rockhurst 2-1. So the Jennies are now ranked number 24 in Division II. They are 8-2-2 two two overall, 4-1-1 one one in the MIAA. Well, Mules Golf, the new rankings actually came out just moments ago. Check my phone before we started the show. Mules Golf is now ranked fourth in the nation after the fall season as this event in St. Joe, the Missouri Western Invitational, was the final event of the fall. The Mules with a solid performance, obviously catching the attention of those national voters. The Mules finishing in second out of 20 teams at the Missouri Western Invitational. Cy Moritz from Owensville, one under par for the 54-hole event to finish in second place to pace the Mules. The Mules lead the MIAA standings heading into the spring season. They will also take that number four national ranking into the spring. The Jennies golf team finished in eighth place out of 13 teams at the Umsel Triton Fall Invitational. That was held last weekend in Panna, Illinois. Freshman Kelly Walker from Perryville paced the Jennies in the 36-hole event. The UCM cross-country teams each captured the championship of the Central Methodist Invitational. That was held last Saturday in Fayette. Senior Tyler Stuber from Liberty won the men's race, and junior Megan Glayman from Kearney won the women's race. The number three ranked Jenny's bowling team opened their season by finishing second out of 10 teams at the Newman Mid-States Classic. Senior Kara Richard from Tecumseh, Michigan was named to the all-tournament team. Well, winners know how to win, and the Jennies have a couple of seniors who have won their entire careers here at UCM. Julia Bates and Taylor Goodness have each been a part of two MIAA championships and two regional championships for Jennies Volleyball. In their senior season, they have the Jennies 21-0 and ranked number four in the nation. So I think it's pretty appropriate. Let's get to know the two senior leaders for the undefeated and fourth-ranked Jennies volleyball team, Julia Bates and Taylor Goodness, in this week's Sports Page Student Athlete Spotlight. Uh, well, we still have a few new players this year, but we still have a lot of returners, and I think that our chemistry has built so much over the year, so that's really helped us play as one whole team. I would definitely have to say that like, we're, we're a balanced team, and yeah, we are young, but we do have some of our you know key players that have a year underneath their belt, and they're able to feel a little more relaxed on the court, which is nice, so I think getting that Team chemistry and everyone kind of getting some experience from last year helps out a lot. Flip really hasn't changed his coaching style from the past season to this season. I mean, it's always the same uh, strategy pretty much. We really want to work on siding out and uh, playing together. Um, we do have a new assistant coach, but uh, Julia's been around her. That's kind of her setter, our setting, I guess, helps out with the setters and everything. Um, but uh, we have a lot of, Flip's never changed his, really, his philosophy since I've been here all four years. It's always been the same thing. We play a lot in practice. Not a whole lot of drills, but when we need him, he'll do them. But, and get after us when he needs to. So, nothing different. Our serve receive has been really good this year, and our serving has been really tough. And I think what we need to improve on is uh, siding out a little better and really working on uh, not letting up when we get ahead in the game. And I started playing volleyball when I was in middle school, probably about fifth grade. And um, my aunt was a volleyball coach for a club team in Kansas City, so she really wanted me to get started in it. And so I started playing club and I really loved it. And um, eventually I quit basketball to be full on volleyball and I just ran off with it, loved it. Decided to play college and I love it. I played volleyball when I was in second grade and I hated it because <laughs> it wasn't enough like it was standing your square and so I just stopped playing volleyball and was focusing on basketball and softball 
And then eighth grade came around and I kind of decided I'd do volleyball just to do a fall sport and actually really liked it because it was a lot more than just standing in your square. You got to actually hit a ball and get excited about it. So that was, I think, there. And then I played some club um, out in Topeka, Kansas. And the girls there just kind of made me realize that that was my true love. I mean, I still love basketball, but I don't think volleyball, like nothing could compare to the feeling that you get when you play volleyball. I feel like my dad has always been a really strong um, person in my life and he's always pushed me to do my best and perform at the highest level. So I think I really appreciate what he's done for me. It's definitely my father. I mean, both my parents are, you know, a big pusher, you know, but um, my dad's always been the one that's always been, if I was pitching when I was little, he'd be my little catcher, and you know, and he, he's been my biggest inspiration, especially this year. He was diagnosed with cancer, and like, just seeing him fight through it made me realize that like, I can fight, you know, like, just as well, and I think that's probably been my biggest motivational person throughout this whole process. Funny story, actually, when I came on my visit, it was blizzarding, and so I didn't really get to uh, visit the campus much. I took probably 10 steps on campus, and then the assistant at the time was like, well, let's turn around, because it's snowing really hard, and I was like, okay. And when I had my coaches meeting, I really loved it. I loved the coaches, and I thought this was the right place for me. So that's why I chose Red. I came on a visit my junior year of high school. Um, I had gone to another school before that, and or two schools before that, and it was just my dad and I, and we came here, and uh, it was a beautiful day, actually a week after Julia, and it was 80 degrees instead of a blizzard, and um, I got off campus, and I called my mom and told her I wanted to do school here because it just felt right, and she thought I was crazy that it was like, oh, it's just a, you know, you're, yeah, right, you know, you need to figure it out first and think about it, but... I, I just knew the second the coaches, everybody, the girls were super nice to me and everything, and I, it just felt right. Flip has always been like a second dad to me. I mean, he is the epitome of a father <laughs> through the good and the bad. And uh, I think he's been a great role model for me also. He's fun, he's a lot of fun. He, I mean, Julia said it too, he's like a father figure to every single one of us. I think that's the first thing that comes to our minds when um, people ask us about him. He's real laid back and he's easy to, if you ever have a problem, you can go up to him and talk to him about it. I mean, we've had a, some problems since I've been here and he's been the first person to have been like, let's get this figured out. And I think a lot of coaches are not willing to help out as much as he is and it's really cool that he steps up and takes that place for us. Um, our fans have been great this season and I hope that they can keep coming out. Uh, and showing their support. I mean, it's awesome to see all the fans uh, that come to the games, and we love it being loud in here, so keep them coming. A couple of great role models, great student athletes right there, Julia Bates and Taylor Goodness. They have each earned all MIAA honors three times in their careers, with Bates twice earning All-American accolades. They've been a part of two MIAA titles and two regional championships at UCM. And in their senior campaign so far, they've led the Jennies to a 21-0 start and a number four national ranking. In just a moment, we'll tell you where all the Mules and Jennies are competing this weekend as Sports Page rolls on after this timeout. A reminder to join us next week here on KMOS TV for the Central Missouri Sports Page. We'll be back in an hour next week as Jim Sabota is in studio. We'll be previewing the homecoming football game coming up on October 26th as Northeastern State comes to Walton Stadium Kennedy Field. Great moments, the theme for homecoming 2013 coming up in a couple of weeks. And in addition to Coach Boda, we'll have Lewis Theobald, the Jenny soccer coach, on the show next week, Thursday night at 7, Saturday at 5 here on KMOS TV. But before we wrap up this week's show, let's run down our upcoming schedule of events so you know where to follow the Mules and Jennies. And before the football Mules host homecoming against Northeastern State of Oklahoma, the Mules football team will travel to Edmond, Oklahoma, a northern suburb of Oklahoma City, this Saturday to take on the Central Oklahoma Broncos, UCO's second year in the MIAA. The Mules have played football for 118 years, but this is the first trip 
for a Mules football team to Wantland Stadium in Edmond. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. on Saturday from Wantland Stadium on the Central Oklahoma campus. We'll have the broadcast for you on 1450 AM, 98.5 The Bar FM, and via the internet at warrensburgradio.com beginning on Saturday at 1140 AM. You can also go to AmericaOneSports.com and watch the webcast. It is a pay-per-view webcast of the game again at AmericaOneSports.com. Com. In other MIAA games this week, 13th ranked Washburn will host Fort Valley State on Thursday night in non-conference action. On Saturday, Northeastern State will host Eastern New Mexico in a non-conference matchup in Tahlequah. In league play, Lincoln is at Nebraska Kearney. 20th ranked Emporia State is at Lindenwood. Southwest Baptist at Fort Hayes State. 7th ranked Pittsburgh State will take on number two Northwest Missouri in Kansas City. And number four Missouri Western is at Missouri Southern. The number 24 Jenny soccer team will take on Central Oklahoma on Friday down in Edmond. On Sunday, the Jennies will host Northeastern State at 1 o'clock at the South Rec Complex. So you can come out and watch the Jennies host Northeastern State Sunday at 1 and then still have time to get home and cheer for the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. So how about that? A little football and football on Saturday. Next Thursday, the Jennies will host Missouri Western out at the South Rec Complex here in Warrensburg. Big match on Saturday for the number four ranked Jenny's volleyball team. They are 21 and 0 and they will put it on the line this Saturday in Topeka, Kansas, three o'clock for the first serve at Lee Arena as the 21 and 0 Jenny's take on the 19 and three and 12th ranked Washburn Ichabods. They used to be the Lady Blues, now known as the Ichabods. Number four versus number 12, ought to be a big match. The Jenny's and Washburn have played in some big ones over the years pertaining to both the MIAA and the region. This one will go a long way in the MIAA standings. Next Wednesday, the Jennies will be back in the Sunflower State. They'll be down the turnpike in Emporia to take on Emporia State. The UCM cross country teams are idle this weekend as they prepare for the MIAA championships coming up on Saturday, October 26th in Pittsburgh, Kansas. And the Jennies golf team closes out the fall portion of their season next Monday and Tuesday at the MIAA Fall Preview in St. Charles. And that's it for another edition of the Central Missouri Sports Page. To keep up with UCM Sports, a reminder to check us out at UCMAthletics.com. We'll be back with you on Thursday night at 7 as Mules football coach Jim Sabota and Jenny soccer coach Louis Theobald join us. That's Thursday nights at 7 and Saturdays at 5 for Sports Page. Thanks for watching tonight. Until next week, for our entire crew, this is Sean Jones saying thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. Support for Sports Page is provided by Union Station, Crossroads to Technology, a one-stop shopping source for technology needs, campus-compatible computers, software for Mac and PCs, and much more. Located on campus on the lower floor of the Elliott Union in Warrensburg. Union Station, Crossroads to Technology. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco, 98.5 The Bar, and WarrensburgRadio.com. 1450 Coco, 98.5 The Bar, and WarrensburgRadio.com, the radio home of UCM Athletics.